Welcome back to the first of the 2014 thermal footage. We have some nice bucks in velvet to show you a little later. A bunch of food plot and property preparation for the new year. Enjoy this. This is the first hog my dad shot. This boar was a nice one, about 175 pounds. That's Greg taking a pose with it. He's about six foot five. And here's his shot coming up. Unfortunately, the scope powers off after he shoots. But watch here as it powers back on. That hog was down. Meanwhile, there's my dad with another one along with that one that we shot. Well, back to food plotting. Need to get ready for this season, which I am so excited for. Here's some shots of equipment and some of the results of last fall's food plot. As for the cabin, there was a lot of work to do with it. Some of us didn't work quite as hard as others. <laughs> now here's a little okay. trick I have for tilling up food plots. I made them think it was a fun race. So that night I took the kids out for their first official hog hunt of the year and we did not see any at the congroves we were in. They were getting pretty tired so I dropped them off at the cabin and go to sleep and I took off for another field and found these two. Let's fast forward through this long stalk and there we go. One hog down. Now it might look like I'm shooting here but I held off the whole time. I had a suppressor for the first time. Yes it was permitted. I readjust pull forward, pull the trigger, and down it goes. Watching it back, you can clearly see I pulled the trigger with the reticle on the head, which is right now. And as expected, the bullet impacted in the middle of the body. Fortunately, right in the spine. The next day, my son decided he should film some of this as well. Took him out to see where the shooting took place. There is what's left after cleaning them. And look at all of the ruts these buggers made in, I believe, one and a half nights. There's another side of the field. We actually saw 50 hogs come out of there when we were driving back in the middle of the day. Most of them real young. Well, here's some game camera pictures. Hope you'll enjoy. Over the last uh, basically late winter, spring on the property. This, of course, is spring, early, early summer. Here you can see those green tubes in the back. That's from the new fruit and pecan trees we planted in the food plots. There's a peanut field starting. That's where uh, my wife made that dive at the end. More hogs. Yeah, we've got coyotes. And some real nice bucks shaping up. Now check out this next picture. We've been filming this girl for a long time. And here she is with one of her fawns posing nicely. There's the peanut field growing up. The electric cart for hunting. The gas cart for hunting. A new blind and feeder spot. And some pictures of the cabin. For anyone that's coming down to a full service hunt guided by us. I can't wait to show you what we've got for the rest of you please enjoy this footage I got real close as you can see to those two bucks meanwhile there were seven other bucks out in the field I'd be surprised if any of them were less than eight point it was pretty amazing I spent probably 45 minutes getting close to these guys stop started re-recorded many times finally I scan over to the right and I see 
these two hogs, what I'd come out there for originally. It's kind of funny but kind of sad. I'd spent so much time filming these fellows that by the time I got to shoot in the hogs, I ran out of batteries in the DVR. Well, I can tell you what happened. First shot behind the ear, down it went. The other hog just stood around and looked. The suppressor really worked, and it dropped dead in its tracks. Two shots, two hogs down, no meat ruined. Perfect eating size, 60, 70 pounds. This is at midnight. Get them back to the cabin and start cleaning. I need to work on my knives, that's for sure. At 4 o'clock, I decide to head back to my buddy's field like I told him I would. And wouldn't you know it, there's these fellows. Hey everybody, check this out. What you're about to see is a shooting that took place in a field with a wind and a safe background issue. So check it out. Here's the field, generally long and rectangular. I enter down here. The wind was blowing straight down the field, which is great. Only problem is the shot from where I discovered them and the hogs uh, puts these houses right in the background. So I need to move this way to get a safe shooting distance. However, that puts the wind blowing my scent right at them. So I moved really quick, constantly watching in the uh, camera or the scope, which makes for shaky footage, but it allows me to be ready the second they move to boom, plant the stake and shoot. Uh, so as I moved here, I saw the little ones get a little bit jitterish and I got ready to take the shot. As it turns out, watching the film back, I don't think that they had detected me, but I didn't want to take a chance. So being that I was shooting quick, I didn't take my time going for the headshot on that first boar. That's why I hit him in the lungs. He ran this way, spraying blood everywhere. Uh, the rest of the pack peeled off over here. I shot, I believe, four times running. Three that you can see, two of which hit a hog. Uh, the other one missed. And one other one, I believe, might have hit a tree because I fired right as they were entering the woods. Enjoy. Watch the little ones move quickly right there. And it causes me to get ready to shoot there. Look at the blood pumping out. Aside from that first shot, the very next time I shoot because of a jam in the gun is right now. I drop one hog and drop that one. Shot behind that one. Here we go again, a little slower. Right now I'm clearing the jammed round, I'm getting ready again. Here it is slower yet on that first shot. As well as the second two shots right now and now. Here are those hogs, that one in the uh, rib cage, this one in the spine and main artery, and last but not least, the first shot at that boar, even 70 yards away, an amazing amount of blood sprayed out on the peanuts. So here I am back starting to clean the last three hogs at 4.30 in the morning. I finally get done cleaning these three around 6.30, 6.45 a.m. as the sun's coming up. And I realize that I need to find the quote-unquote perfect knives and sharpening system. Since the time I decided I need to find that, and now, I think I may have come up with it. And I'll let you all know here in future videos. The season should be great this coming year, and I cannot wait. Well, we're back here in Tennessee today. The day I'm editing this is September 1st, and as you can see here, my son and I, oh, and our cat, have been doing some squirrel hunting. I'm very sorry to say the squirrel population is nowhere near what it was the last couple years. Regardless, we should be able to make some exciting videos. Speaking of that, I have a couple of them out featuring him doing some shooting. Yet, I've gotten very few views on YouTube. Please spread the word. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, the footage is okay, but the fact that he's shooting these things with regular sights at the seven years of age and now eight, I think it's pretty cool. Please spread the word. So until the season starts, it's just back to tweaking my gear and getting prepared. You see that semi-auto firearm in the middle there with the tan stock? 
That's a SCAR 17, 308 caliber, which I plan on doing some more experimenting now thanks to having suppressors legalized. You might be interested in knowing, however, that all the footage I just showed you was with 223. One shot, they all go down, if it's placed properly. Before I go, I wanted to show you these pictures of late night shooting with great arrow placement from 22 to 52 yards. Last but not least, this is just a few days ago, warming up for crow season. Hey, around me, 7 is a great day. And a matter of fact, I could have got a lot more shooting, but I hardly brought any shells with me. They came into the decoys and the calls, awesome, it was fantastic, and I cannot wait for the pecan groves in southwest Georgia. It's going to be awesome.